Hey guys, so today I thought I'd do another tips for collecting military video. Um, I've done, you know, several of these in the past and everything. Some of you guys might have already watched them. Uh, if you haven't, I'd appreciate it if you did. And uh, hopefully, you know, these tips I give can uh, help you with your collecting, maybe answer some questions you have, uh, maybe give you some ideas or, or like I said, tips uh, just to kind of help you uh, with you know, the hobby, you know what I mean? Because there's always so much to learn. Nobody knows it all, but, um, you know, I just enjoy sharing some of the knowledge and some of the things that I've kind of picked up on over the years and uh, that people might have shared with me or I came up with myself. But, um, you know, I just want to continue uh, to encourage you guys to keep on collecting. Uh, remember to have fun and, uh, you know, share this hobby with as many people as you can because we got to keep this thing going. But um, I've got just a, a little bit of random stuff here on the table. And um, I was going to talk about a few things first, and then I'll bring you in and kind of show you some stuff that's here on the table. But um, I just jotted down just a, about seven or eight different little tips that I wanted to share with you. And uh, one thing I wanted to say is, you know, sometimes uh, there might be somebody selling something that you're interested in, but it might be a part of a big group or a lot um, of, you know, something that uh, somebody's wanting to sell all together. Like they don't want to break that up, whatever the items may be. You might want one out of five things. But what I would say, though, is, you know, if uh, I mean, if you can afford it, you know, then I mean, just buy everything. And then the stuff that you don't want, you can turn around and, and sell it and maybe get some of your money back or even all of it, you know, or maybe even make some kind of a profit. You know what I mean? So, you know, just because uh you might not want most of the items or a lot of them i mean if there's something you really want maybe it's something you've been looking for for a long time it'll fill a, a hole in your collection then uh again as long as you can financially do it you know what i mean i would go ahead and do it uh but you know sometimes it could take a little time to get your money back you know or even part of it but just think if you even if you got some of the money back then that's more money you could put towards other things that you might want you know that you'll come across in the future so, and that's just a tip, you know, because in the past, there was times where I was in those situations. I was a new collector, and I was like, man, I don't want all that stuff. You know, that doesn't really go with the theme, I guess, of my collection. And, and you know, there's times when I actually passed up on things that I really wanted. But, you know, as I became an advanced collector, I guess you could say, more knowledgeable and everything, and uh, I guess more financially stable, um, you know, I just started, you know, buying different things. And, um, you know, and if I could, you know, I would turn around and try to sell it because the items that I might not want the next guy or the, you know, or girl, cause there are girls in this hobby, believe it or not. So thank you for all the females that help keep this going as well. Cause it's not just a male hobby. I mean, we, we appreciate any support anybody gives us for what we do, but I'm just saying though that next person, you know, they might be really excited. Like, Man, that's something I've always wanted. You know what I mean? So you could be helping somebody else. And, and not even realize it, but that's just one thing there. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to look over here. Another thing, like, so, you know, I do unboxing videos sometimes, and uh, some of you guys do it as well. I would just be careful with that, and most of you are, probably all of you. And uh, just when it comes to unboxing videos, I mean, you don't want to give your personal information out there or the person that you, uh, that sent you something, or maybe you're going to send them something, either way. You know, it would be good to cover up your names and address because as much as I love you guys, all love you, and I'm thankful for you, I mean, you know, I still have a family, a wife, and three kids, and I have to do my part, you know, to take care of my family and, and, and their well-being and everything else. And so you don't just want anybody and everybody having your, your phone number or your address or access to your house. And that's not saying anybody's a bad person, but we know evil exists. There are people with bad intentions, so you just got to use a lot of wisdom and uh, just, you know, make good decisions for yourself and your family and everything. Um, but um, really, that's about all I want to talk to here in front of you. I'm going to go ahead and bring you in, and I'll talk more about some of these other tips for collecting. Okay, so just some different, you know, items here, random things here on the table. And uh, I'll go ahead and start. Most of you guys have been following me for a while know that I love, uh, you know, collecting. And I'm OCD. And I'm all about keeping track of what I have, um, you know, what I've paid for something. 
and a description of what it is because you know god forbid you know I, I died i wouldn't want my wife to struggle to figure out what everything is in my collection and values and everything else um you know if she ever had to sell it because we know there's those guys that'll take advantage of widows or people in you know different situations and they'll come in and give them a hundred dollars for everything because they're low lives and so what i do is you know you've guys seen my the tags here i put these on just about everything and i know sometimes people when they're you know displaying their collection taking pictures showing it off this might be kind of an eyesore so i mean if you were just going to take a picture of say a helmet or something i mean you could always take this off and once your picture's taken or videos done of your items or whatever it is and you can put it back on there but what I do is I, I just write a description on here of what it is and what I paid for it, just so, you know, it can be known, you know, round about what it is and, and what I paid for it at the time. Um, I do have these lists here. This is just some of many, which these are pretty outdated. I do need to kind of go through and update them, but just, I've got lists on canteens and helmets and liners and, and all kind of stuff that I, I, I have on my computer. I have Microsoft Word. I got all the files saved. I've even got, like, the little... Uh, stick drive things stuff saved on those videos and different lists and stuff so it's always good to have some kind of an inventory some kind of a a log i guess you could say just of what you have um because i mean you never know what might could happen you know god forbid a fire happened or a break-in or something like that you just want to keep good records of what you have because you know you work hard i mean most of us you know have jobs and, and maybe even careers or whatever i'm just saying that we spend our our money on this and we want to make sure that we're protected and and we make good uh, financial decisions and good decisions when it comes to our collection and, you know, and our families as well. So, like I said, just keep some kind of regular log and tag your items some way just to have uh, some kind of way of identifying what they are. So, another thing, you know, I'm all about veteran support. And if you think about it, if it wasn't for veterans, if it wasn't for military, I mean, you know, and all the wars fought and the people serving now and everything else, I mean that's that's why we collect i mean we want to preserve their memory we want to do our part to um you know display things nice and and like i said i like to label things and everything as a way of um you know showing respect and everything for those that have served those that are serving those that have passed on those that are still living uh and so it's just very important you know to spend time with veterans you know talk to them on the phone write them letters you know talk to them in person uh, shake their hands, thank them for their service, spend time with them, you know, and I mean, because especially the World War II guys, I think they're passing away at like two or three hundred a day, so it's like tens of thousands every year are passing away, you know, and so just spend time with them and everything, and I could, I'll even show you this, this has been a video over a year ago, this right here is Mr. Russell Pickett, pretty well-known veteran. He actually passed away, I think, about two or three months ago. I think he passed in, like, March or April of this year. And um, I wrote him, you know, I, I typed him up a letter because my handwriting's not that great at typing up a nice letter. And uh, he sent me this of himself. There he is. He was in the 29th uh, Infantry Division. You know, he was right there, uh, um, you know, D-Day, in the, the thick of the fighting and, you know, uh, wading ashore and everything. Uh, you know, he's on uh, YouTube. There's all kind of videos and different things. If you want to look him up, Russell Pickett, you know, God rest his soul. But I'll even share this with you. You know, there's my name, Jonathan Blanton. But it says, thank you for the letter. I'm sure any World War II veteran would who would receive a letter like this would feel as I do. I'm very grateful to get it. To me, it is uplifting. Thanks again. And then he says, I do not have any paraphernalia from World War II because, you know, I told him that I collect old military stuff. And he said, I came out on a stretcher, and I woke up in England. My pants, empty pockets, was supposed to have two spread eagle patches I had taken from a German officer's uniform, but they were missing too. I sent this picture. It has information on the back that might interest you. Thank you also for the blessing. I'm a Christian. May God bless you. Yours, Russell Pickett. You know, and I, don't, and I was reading that, and I'm not bragging on myself, but, you know, I enjoy, you know, writing and encouraging people and thanking people you know and just showing love and appreciation and i think that's a great way to live i mean that's uh most of you guys know some of you guys know i'm very religious and i'm not trying to push that off on any of you at all but you know i love god and uh i believe that uh you know he's blessed me greatly and he uses me to help people encourage people give them hope and everything and you know i just love helping people i'm a people person you know and i just like to um try to uplift people, you know, 
in any way that I can, you know, just to try to be there for people. You never know what somebody's going through, you know. You might be having the one of the best days of your life, and the person right next to you could be going through a really difficult time. So, you know, it's always good to just be nice to people, be patient, be a good listener. Because, I mean, you know, the Bible even says uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So you don't want to be negative or, or critical or, you know, or tear somebody down who might already be, you know, depressed or going through different things. You know, I've been there myself and, you know, uh, I've, you know, I've come a long way and I thank God for what he's done for me himself and using other people. But anyways, you know, it just made me feel good that the letter I, I sent this man touched him in, in, in a good way. And, you know, like I said, he just passed. God rest his soul. But see, stuff like that, these, you know, these veterans, they, they, I mean, you know, so many of them came back, you know, and, and even, I even think about Korean veterans and Vietnam, Vietnam guys, they were treated terribly when they came back, that a lot of these people are hurting, you know, and I mean, you know, kind words go a long way, a, a, a nice smile, a, a firm handshake, you know what I mean, just being nice to people, I'll even tell you this, uh, I was at the gas station just about two weeks ago, I was pumping my gas, and here comes a man, uh, the next stall over, World War II veteran hat on. I went over to him, started talking to him, and took a picture with him, and he enjoyed it. He loved it. He's about to be 95 next month, and I mean, he loved it. You know, I love these guys. You know, I like spending time with them, especially the older World War II vets, but um, again, just be nice to people, you know, just be appreciative and thankful. But um, I'll go ahead and move on. So another tip I have for you is sometimes, you know, we get, you know, photos that might be, say, this big. I'm sorry about the glare. You know, a smaller photo, right? And this is actually my grandfather. He was in the uh, Korean War. He was a Marine. Most of you guys watch me know the story. And um, he was actually the Battle of uh, the Chosen Reservoir and Incheon, Pusat, all that kind of stuff. But um, so I had this photo. This is an original photo here. And I actually took it to CVS and blew it up probably, I don't know, three or maybe four times the normal size. And when you do that, you get so much more detail. Like I said, this is my my grandfather, my dad's dad. You know, he was a Ford Observer, 81 millimeter mortar platoon. And see, he's got an M1 Garand uh, rifle slung on his shoulder. He's got his binoculars and different things. And you see how much more detailed the bigger photo is than this right here. You know, you got to... I mean, you can still make out things, but just, I mean, it was worth whatever it was, like five or six bucks to enlarge this photo, and I got a nice frame for it, and you see the old, the original photo even had mustard on there, and it even blew up the mustard, I, I don't, I'm just kidding, I don't know what that is, it might be mustard, but, or highlighter, or whatever, but, anyway, that's just a tip, take the CVS, maybe even Walgreens, and blow up your photo, and, I mean, you'll be blown away. You might see stuff in the background or something uh, particular about a uniform or something that you couldn't see in the smaller photo, but that's one thing. So another thing I want to share with you is um, I highly want to encourage you guys, if you want to collect mill serps, get your CNR license, Curio and Relic license. I actually did a video back in December. Uh, I'll put it at the end of this video if you want to watch it to kind of talk about, you know, how to go about applying for a CNR license. And they're good for three years. It's, uh, I believe it's $35. It took me six weeks to get mine in the mail. There's, you know, some things you have to do to get, you know, to get it approved and everything else. But I'm um, looking into getting your CNR license. Uh, you know, it'll save you, uh, you know, FFL fees if you want to do transfers or whatever else. But, um, you know, definitely read into it. You know, you can even have rifles shipped to your door. Like I said, instead of going through a gun shop or a pawn shop or whatever else. So there's a lot of good benefits for that. I mean, the only thing is, you know, like we know mill serps for the most part are, are going up in price. Unless you go through the CMP, their M1 Garands are 650 starting out, uh, 750. You know, I went there back in December. I got a, a couple videos on that. But um, just check into your Curio and Relic license um, and get you a, a good record book. You, if you do get a license, you have to keep good records uh, just in case you get audited possibly by the ATF. You never know. I actually got my wife got me this off Amazon. So I thank you, Rob, for uh, giving me the lead on where to get one of those books. And they'll send you all kind of stuff in the mail. Here's a firearms list and personal firearms record. And there's different paperwork and stuff that's good to have. But... Uh, look into that, you know, and it could really maybe help you expand your collection. Um, that's just a tip there. But um, 
I've actually got, uh, I guess, about one more thing I wanted to share with you. And um, it's kind of random. I know a lot of this stuff's paper-related, and this is just kind of an odd item to have here with the mix of what's on the table. But So I've got, you know, just a World War II canteen, Volrath 1944. But a tip that I have, I actually did a similar tip in another video with, like, a, a bayonet and its scabbard. You know, sometimes a bayonet is hard to get in and out of the scabbard. It's all rusty, cruddy, gum, whatever. And I mentioned just getting you some gun oil and just putting it on the blade, maybe even squirt a little bit down in the scabbard. You don't want to go overboard, and it'll help, you know, the uh, the the bayonet slide in and out of the scabbard easier. Same thing like with uh, canteens. Some of you guys know, I mean, some of these canteens, to get the cap off, it's a pain in the butt. I mean, it is just so difficult because they're almost corroded. Sorry, my camera works terrible here. It's corroded and just terrible. You know, the threads get all nasty and everything. This one's not too bad. I've already kind of cleaned it some, you know, in the cap. And then the threads here can kind of be boogered up. But what you can do is you can actually just get something like this, Remington oil. And you can actually just put, like, you know, a light coat around the threads here on the canteen. And maybe even the threads here inside the cap. Just a light... Um, coat of gun uh, you know gun oil or maybe any type of oil for that matter but and it'll help you so much with screwing on and off of your canteen cap so uh, just a little tip there i want to throw in here at the end gun oil threads and like i said bayonet and a scabbard you know there's other uh ways you can use just a little bit of gun oil to kind of help you you know uh break like I said, crud or rust, corrosion. Some guys might use WD-40 or something like that. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I thank you guys that are still with me. I know sometimes I can be long-winded, but I just want to give as much information out there as I can. Uh, I love you guys so much. I pray that God blesses you and your family in a mighty way. If you're going through anything right now, I just want to encourage you, you know, to keep your head up. You know, sometimes we're going to go through difficult times and situations in our life. You know, some things are just life. Sometimes our faith might just be untested, you know. But I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're religious or not, you know, just seek God and, you know, just pray. And, I mean, He knows what we're going through and He knows how to bring it out of it. So, just um, draw close to the Lord. You know, I believe that we're going through some, you know, spiritual warfare right now, a lot going on in the world. And it doesn't even necessarily take a religious person to see that there's just a lot of unsettling things going on right now. But uh, if you guys are going through anything at all, keep your head up. You know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, people love you and care about you, whether you realize it or not. And um, I just want you guys to know that I love all of you. I love everybody. The Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. And I love everybody, even those that maybe I don't always agree with or might not even love me back. But... Keep your head up. Keep on collecting. I'm here for you guys. God bless you. I'll be getting back to you soon. Thank you.